Welcome to Flybox. Today I'm going to go over a very effective dubbing blend that I've been using for a number of years now. Uh, I use it primarily for pheasant tails. Uh, I like a dubbed body on a lot of my pheasant tails, especially when they're smaller. Uh, I don't like the pheasant tail body. It just seems to perform better for me. Gives a thing a little bit of movement. And, um, and I've used it for a long, long time, even with the standard pheasant tail pattern with uh, using it in the thorax. I also use it for the Asankia nymph. Um, it's a, almost a perfect match uh, especially when wet it doesn't necessarily look that way when you first tie it but when wet it looks uh, it, it's spot on for color uh, I use five parts of uh, different materials I use two parts of beaver under fur one part uh, woodchuck under fur one part pheasant tail ice dubbing and one part olive ice dubbing um, you can leave depending on the piece of of beaver material that you have you can leave if you can leave some of the spiky if you if you wish you can leave some of the spike material the guard fur the guard hair um, in there and just use or just use the under fur I use all of it I trim it off uh, as it is, but this is a, a, a very, uh, I think this is more of a lower flank size side uh, piece of beaver. Uh, once you get around the back, I would take more of the guard hairs out of it. Uh, it just gets a little bit too stiff. So that's the, the beaver. Um, depending on where it is, if it's a softer piece and, uh, and it's more in the belly, go ahead and uh, leave the, the guard hairs in it. And it won't be, it won't affect it. On the muskrat or on the woodchuck or groundhog, you have to take the guard hairs out. So you end up with, I'll show you, you'll end up with, uh, with woodchuck when you strip the guard hairs out. You end up with a two tone under fur. The tips of this under fur, I've always felt, and I've said it on a couple videos, uh, almost have the same properties as some seal and polar bear. It's got a translucent uh, attribute to it. It doesn't. It, it's not the same texture, but it's got a translucency that you can't really find anywhere else in any of the under furs for for uh, on animals. The the woodchuck just or the groundhog, uh, either one just uh, has that white tipped material that uh, you can't copy. So again I use beaver, the under fur from groundhog, then I use peacock ice dubbing, one part, and olive ice dub one part. I, all I do is divide it into equal amounts. I started out making the blend by going by how much groundhog that I had. Uh, I would save my dubbing as I tied my chuck patterns and uh, and over the course of a year I'd gather up enough and then I would match two parts of the beaver and, and the, the ice dub accordingly. Uh, whatever works best for you uh, it, it's, it's as long as you stick with that formula here is the dubbing it is an easy to dub material. It still remains spiky. If you've worked with beaver much, you know that it's very soft. Uh, has a different has different uh, wet properties than dry, uh, even more so than um, than than rabbit. But it's been uh, just a unbelievable dubbing material for me. I figured I would share it. Again, great for pheasant tails. If you're tying a, a, using a pheasant tail dubbing, your Sankia nymphs spot on. Um, and any darker nymph, I use a, I use rabbit for most of my lighter materials. But for anything darker than say a natural hare's ear, I go with this dubbing. Try it on a few patterns. Let me know what you think. I've been fishing that this dubbing uh, since pretty much since Ice Dub came out. So. Uh, let me know how it works for you, and uh, hope it adds to your box. Thank you very much.